Welcome to the second episode in a series of very short and superficial clips about various aspects in Locksport. The topic of today's video – how does a pin tumbler actually work? If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about new videos, but also explore existing videos about fun stuff all around lockpicking. But now let's come to the topic of today's episode – how does a pin tumbler actually work? In a short moment we will be having a very close look to this DOM lock as a representative of one of the most common pin tumbler locking systems. We will see why the lock is usually locked up so the plug doesn't turn, why the right key enables the plug to turn, why the wrong key has no chance to turn the plug and how a lock pick operates in the keyway and can manipulate the pins to pick open a lock. To see how it works, let's take it apart. So here's the lock taken apart and we can inspect all the guts. First of all, here is the housing of the lock and the chambers in the Bible. The, that's the Bible, the lower part. And the chambers in the Bible are the home of the springs and the driver pins. First the spring, then on top of it goes the driver pin. The bottom row of pins is called the key pins and these go in the chambers of the plug. Let's have a closer look to the plug. We can see the keyway, that's where the key slides in and interacts with the key pins. The length of the key pins is very important because they need to match the cutouts on the key. For a deep cutout we need a long key pin and for a shallow cutout we need a short key pin. This way we can make sure that when the right key slides in we get a flush shear line. Let's quickly populate the plug with the key pins to look at it a little bit closer. Now here's the plug completely reassembled with all the key pins with the tips of the pins pointing down and we can see that there are gaps remaining in the chambers of the plug and when we now slide in the key that has the right bidding we can see that the shear line is flush and so the plug will turn. Without the key, the plug won't turn because there are the driver pins on top of it that will block the shear line, pushed down by the springs. Just like so. Now when we slide in the right key, the driver pins are pushed out of the way and the shear line is flush and the plug will turn. Now what will happen when we insert a key with a bidding that does not match the length of the key pins? A wrong key inserted will look like this. Here the first position is not the right height and so the key pin will stick out for example and the plug won't turn. Now how does a pick operate? in a plug or in a keyway. So let's populate the first stack again. Now remember the first episode of this series you have to insert a tension wrench, turn the plug so that the pins bind, one or more pin will bind. Let's imagine the first driver pin will bind. So now we can stick in the pick, lift the first pin until the shear line is clear and so the plug will turn just a tiny bit and the shear line will stay clear at the first chamber and now another pin will bind and so you can continue to pick the lock open. Here is another view to the situation with the pins and the springs laid out. We can imagine how the key has slid in the keyway of the plug and pushed the key pins against the drivers and the spring tension. As the length of the key pins meet the bidding, so the cutout on the key, we can see that the, that the shear line is clear and the plug would turn. If now a different key is used that has a bidding that do not meet the length of the key pins, in this case number one is different, we can see how the first key pin is pushed above the shear line and now we'll block it. 
so that the plug won't turn. All right, that was it. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you um, could understand how a regular pin tumbler works. So thank you very much for watching. And until we meet again, happy picking and bye-bye.